All right, let's talk uh, Yankees. Episode 530. The Yankees take two of three from the uh, L.A. Dodgers. Um, wins and losses wise, it was a good series, and that is the only thing that matters at the end of the day. But we have some stuff to talk about. Episode 530 of the podcast. I'm your host, RJ. Let's get into it on BD4. Welcome to BD4, an RJ Carbone podcast. BD4, where there is no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. We also do MMA. Yanks every series, Knicks every game, MMA on occasion. BD4 is a five-star show on Apple Podcasts, also available in video format on YouTube and Spotify. So thanks for stopping by, and we hope you enjoy the show. Champion of the world, turning, looking, see ya! Anthony for three, bang! That one goes down, and the game is tied! Time! Penetrate, creates, and showing some dexterity as well with the left hand. All right, so we're getting right into the episode here. Welcome to episode 530 of the podcast. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. And the Yankees take two of three from that cesspool LA. I hate that city. I hate that fan base. I hate that organization. I just hate the Dodgers, man. It's it's like an old school rivalry, but like, yeah, it's it's something that's never gone away in me. Um, I don't know. I've, I've always hated that team. I, I think they get overhyped every year despite not winning a title in this era um if you want to count the half championship they won in the fake season go for it but not a fan of the Dodgers so I'm happy we took at least two kind of wished it was a four game series um Yankees Dodgers you know you kind of got to do that but the Yankees took care of what was in front of them and yes winning and losing wise it was a good series which again is all that matters at the end of the day Things remain solid. Um, They take two of three from Seattle, and then they took two of three from L.A. So they won four of six out on the West Coast trip, and now they will head back home to face Chicago, uh, the White Sox, and Boston for the first time. That's crazy. Uh, But they're doing this at 36 and 25 right now overall. Um, They're still in the same spot in the East, six from Tampa, and I think two or three from Baltimore. So, you know, what what can you do about that? Most of that is from their terrible April. Um, It was brutal, but since that 500 start in the first 30 games, the Yankees in their last 31 games have now played 678 ball. Um, So, yes, uh, overall... They keep winning at a steady pace, um, and we can only hope that continues now going forward. With the news that we've been getting recently with all these injuries, uh, and man, do we have some stuff to talk about there before we even dive into the series recap. Um, the Yankees keep getting banged up, man. They keep doing it. I mean, you see Weber, Greg Allen, Cortez, Judge now, all this, the Bader not too long ago. And let me say first off, I am obviously I'm so damn tired of these injuries, but I'm really getting tired of this snowflake cupcake narrative. Um, you know, and I'm on social media, so I see Yankees fans blaming everything every time on the training staff, the training staff, the training staff, the training staff. Wah wah wah. Like. <laughs> It's so classic, typical, I should say, 2023, where you blame everybody but the player. Where's the accountability at some point? It's nowhere. It's like we don't have that anymore. People blame everything. They always do. For some reason, nowadays, we always want to blame everything but the problem itself. And I'm so goddamn sick and tired of that. I mean, we go back, I don't know why you guys, some of us just don't have brains or something, but we go back, was it three years ago? I don't know. It was pretty recently where the Yankees, they rehauled their entire training staff. So they did that, but nothing has changed. They're still getting injured. And I wonder why. 
could it possibly be, crazily enough, could it be that the fact that these players that you're so in love with, to where you're never going to put blame on them, are just injury prone? Some of them are pieces of glass. Could it be? I mean, I know some of them are freak accidents, but Bader got hurt a ton with St. Louis. Stanton's always gotten hurt. He was hurt a lot with Miami. Donaldson's 38 years old. Judge has always gotten injured easily at 6'8", 280. It's got zero to do with the training staff. Zero. I'm done with the blaming of the training staff. I'm not doing that anymore. It's gotten to a point where maybe it's just the player themselves. Not being able to play baseball games consistently. So I'm sick of that narrative that's been flying around. The training staff narrative. I'm, I'm just sick. I'm sick. Over and over. The fact that we just always throw the blame away from the players. It can be anything but the players. These guys can't stay healthy. And that is on them. Not their coaches, not their trainers, not their mommy and daddy. It's not the ballpark's fault. It's them. That's them. It's their own fault. They're getting injured. Again, some of them are freak accidents. What the fuck are you going to do? But you don't blame the training staff for guys who usually get hurt getting hurt. Guys who've been hurt with other organizations getting hurt again. It's not the training staff. It's the New York Yankees players themselves. Um, I will say one thing about the Yankees. So maybe I'll side with you on this. Maybe the Yankees should see that all this garbage load management, resting crap, whatever you want to call it, that they keep doing. Maybe they should stop. Maybe they should stop emphasizing extra rest days every night with one of their regulars, if not two at the same time. I mean, shit, you already got the the Stanton and Donaldson thing. They planned that in there, that they're not going to play the entire series. That was ridiculous, but it's every it's with everyone. Like, have you ever thought? Have the Yankees ever thought that maybe the more they sit these guys, the more their muscles tighten up. <laughs> maybe the more they play, the the easier it'll be for them to stay loose. Just a thought, you know. But I'm no doctor, so who the hell am I? Um, but yeah, here we are again. And it kind of just puts a, a big. Stain on the, on what should have been a positive series, and it was a positive series, but it's just annoying because more guys are getting hurt. Weber is probably done for the Yankees. Sounds like it's Tommy John. Um, not that he's a big part of the team, uh, but Greg Allen is also going to be hurt for a bit. He just got DL'd. They called back up um, Oswaldo Cabrera, who spent about a day or two in Pennsylvania. Um, Nestor Cortez is also hurt with a bad shoulder. He'll be on the DL. The Yankees say he'll probably miss two starts, maybe more. Um, it, it could easily be one of their, you know, phantom D, uh, phantom injury stints, you know, that they so often do to give a guy a few. Uh, or it could be real. Who knows? But I, I'm not stressing this one. Can't say that I'm going to miss Nestor Cortez and his five something ERA. Um, on a positive, Rodon is progressing. They say. Uh, I don't care about these updates, even if it goes well, even if everything goes well. What's he going to be back? Are we talking like mid-July? So I I don't understand the BS updates. It's like tease. Just like tell me when the guy is rehabbing with Scranton Wilkesbury, and then I'll be cool. Um, please. Uh, and then the judge thing. Obviously, judge is. There's a a solid chance that he's going to be headed to the DL, um, after hurting his foot. Uh, on that play in the middle game there. Uh, And I want to talk about this Aaron Judge thing when we return from our first break because I've got some things to say about this. Stay with us. We'll be right back. BD4 episode 530. We appreciate you sticking around and listening so far. When you have a chance, be sure to open YouTube to subscribe, like, and comment. And if you're already watching on YouTube, be sure to head over to Apple Podcasts and give us a five-star review. We appreciate your feedback and are always looking to improve. Now, with that all said, let's get you back to the show. All right, so welcome back to the show. I'm your host, RJ Carbone, and you are listening to episode 430 of BD4. Um, yeah, so Aaron Judge hurts his game running through a wall, literally, in the middle game of the series. 
Um, if you listen to his interview, man, he is absolutely done and he knows it. I, I think it's pretty, pretty um, set that he's going to be on the DL with a broken toe. Uh, that sounds like a month and a half at least to me. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I try to think of the worst case scenario. So if it's not the worst case, it feels good. But if it's what it sounds like and it sounds pretty bad, we're talking mid-July, maybe August. Like I, That's what I'm going to prepare for. Just so it's, I guess, easier for me to live with if it's not as bad. Um, and listen, this is why, and man, this is going to be a controversial take. Uh, it's, it's one of the reasons why outside from his atrocious as ever playoff performances, which don't get talked about enough, these injuries with judge are why I've never been the biggest Aaron judge fanboy. Um, that's not to say I'm against them bringing him back on the contract. They did. I am for that. I think they had to. And yes, I appreciate judge. Yes. Uh, he, he's had potential. He's got potential to put together one of the greatest primes of this generation. Right, all that stuff I understand. He's incredible what he does, the defense, the offense, obviously. But but you know about me if you if you listen to the show for a while, if you know me in person as a Yankees fan, I've never been the biggest Judge fanboy. Uh, th- these injuries, I mean, the best availability is what is it? The best ability is availability, and I know some of these injuries again have been freak accidents. The Jacob Junis hit by pitch against Kansas City. Uh, and now we get this running into a wall shit. But I don't care. Nor should you. The bottom line is the guy is just hurt every other year. He seems to go on to the DL. It's way too often. You can't have your number one franchise player be missing this consistently. I mean, think about it. In 2017, he played the entire year. He broke out, but he even had the injury derail his second half. But 2018, he only plays 112 games. 2019, he only plays 102 games. 2020, he only plays 28 of the 60 games. 2021, he played a solid 148. Last year, he played 157. But now, 2023, with this news, he's probably going to play the same amount he did in 2018-2019, in which I want to say 110 to 120. So we're looking at, in total, if this ends up being as bad as expected, four seasons of the seven that Aaron Judge has played in where he'll miss significant time. That's not good. And some people actually have the balls to say that he's not prone to getting hurt. That's what you call a fanboy. That's infatuation. That's why I don't root for the number, but only for the logo. Because I know I will have, if I root for for my favorite players... I don't like to do that because it's like you're rooting with a partisan mindset. I don't care about these players on a personal level, man. I don't. That's why Domingo Herman's one of my favorite pitchers. <laughs> I care about wins. That's it. Win me games. And if you do that, I'll like you. If you stay in the field and you produce in the game's biggest moments, I like you. But how often can we say Judge has done both of that? Not as often as we'd like. And that's unfortunate. And I'll also say that this is no excuse now. Uh, If he's out a while, this should not be an excuse. Hold on. Something just happened to my laptop. We good? Okay, we're good. That was weird. Um, This shouldn't be an excuse for the Yankees to start losing. To have this ultra loser mentality during this stretch. And beg for them to play 500 ball this next month. That shouldn't be the mentality. No. Absolutely, positively, no. Not not at all. The Yankees have Stanton. The Yankees have Torres. The Yankees have Rizzo. The Yankees have an undefeated Garrett Cole. The Yankees have the number one bullpen in baseball. They have a team right now. There is zero reason for this Yankees team to lower their expectations now. So that's not what we're going to do this month. The Yankees just just took four of six out west, and they gained no ground on Tampa and Baltimore. So they've still got just as big of a a job to do as they did a week or two ago. In this month of June, 
plus a little more. We have eight series coming up where there's a big opportunity with this upcoming schedule to still do plenty of damage. So we can't baby them just because they're going to lose Judge. You've got the White Sox for three this month. You've got six against Boston, two against the Mets, three against the Mariners, three against Texas, three against Oakland, three against St. Louis. That's a stretch right there where the Yankees, at minimum, with this roster, should go 14-9. and nine. Minimum. Preferably 15-8 and eight if we're being honest. 15-8 and eight will be good. But without Judge, 14-9 and nine should be the minimum. I mean, these are some underwhelming teams that I just listed. Even including Texas. That's a stretch of eight series against teams with a combined 455 win percentage. So do damage. Stop making excuses. Do your jobs. That's what their mentality should be. If they take two from Chicago, three of six from Boston, one from the Mets, two from Seattle, one against Texas, three against Oakland, and two from St. Louis, that sounds pretty underwhelming, but that right there, that, that's 14 wins itself. So, get it done. Get it done. There's no excuses for them to not get it done regardless. Let's get into the series recap. We'll talk about the uh, three games that took place this weekend. Yankees, Dodgers, be right back. We'll get to it. You can also find us on social media. If you'd like, you can follow BD4 on Facebook, and we're at BD4Pod on both Instagram and Twitter. We appreciate you helping us grow more and more every day. Let's get back to it. All right, so welcome back to the show, episode 530 of the podcast. The Yanks take two of three in Cesspool, L.A. Um, first game of the series, the Yankees lose this 8-4. to four. It was Severino versus Kershaw. Uh, the pitcher's duel that never was, at least not from the Yankees' side. Um, yeah, this game was over in the first inning when Severino did his best Johnny Brito impression. Um, hey, maybe he forgot what time the game was, right? That's a good throwback. I was at that game, by the way. Uh, the first, uh, the, the, blah. First off, in the top of the first inning, uh, it just started off with terrible energy. You did have the Torres base hit to lead it off, but then immediately after, Judge bounces into a double play, and Rizzo strikes out on three pitches. Very uncompetitive. Um, but it happens in the bottom of the first. It all falls apart as the Dodgers rounded the order and scored six on Luis Severino. Uh, Betts and, and Muncie go deep. A couple of singles and a sack fly in there. Uh, suddenly it's 6 nothing. Yankees scored a couple of fake runs in the returns of Donaldson and Stanton. Uh, Donaldson goes deep twice, Stanton once, but the Yankees end up losing this game 8-4. to four. Uh, Severino, four innings pitched, seven runs, nine hits, a walk, two strikeouts, three home runs, and a loss. Um, that first inning was just a nightmare, and it felt like he was never going to get out of it. Uh, but thank God for Jose Trevino, by the way, <laughs> who helped him get out of it with the pickoff. But you had a home run to Betts, sharp ground out to Freeman, an overturned single, Home run to Muncie, single to Martinez, single to Hayward, single to Vargas, single to Outman, sack fly by Rojas, a single by Betts. And then the, uh, the Trevino pick off to save his ass and get out of the inning. I mean, he was absolutely dog water in this game. Even the outs, consistent, hard contact. Maybe he was tipping his pitches. Maybe he wasn't. Regardless, he looked like a giant piece of litter out there. Um, his fastball velocity was down as well. I mean, we're talking two, two and a half miles per hour. It's, that's pretty significant. Um, the location was horrible. There was no command. The slider had no break. I mean, it landed middle, middle every time. I hope he's not hurt. You never know. A guy looks this awful in the major league game and you have to at least think about maybe he's hurt. 
when the velocity is down, when the location's down, when the stuff looked off, makes you think. And it is Luis Severino after all. So would you be shocked if something came out later, especially with, with the way this team gets hit in waves? But yeah, it, it was an unacceptable performance by him, and it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, maybe it shouldn't. But it always feels like Severino has been a guy who melts when the game matters most. I don't know. It almost feels like he gets up too much and he starts pumping way too many fastballs down the dick. But it's got to stop. It's got to stop. And he's going to have to bounce back this week against the White Sox with at least six strong. So that was the first game of the series. The Yankees drop it 8-4. to four. On Saturday night, the Yankees won 6-3. Garrett Cole going up against, I don't know, is it Grove? Um, But the Yanks get two big home runs from Jake Bowers once in the second inning to follow that DJ LeMayu triple, makes it 2-0, and then once in the fourth to make it 4-1 following the Anthony Rizzo single. Judge makes it 5-1 in the sixth with number 19 on the year. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Sucks because he would be on pace for 60, but he's probably going to miss time now. Um, but yeah, he got a hang-in slider, and he took it to left field. Bomb. Um, Cole was pulled after six strong with only 80 pitches because of cramps. Um, I think he's okay. And then the Yankee bullpen gets hit very hard. Peralta got banged up in the seventh by the two Miguels. Makes it 5-3. to three. He couldn't record an out, but King comes in. He saves the day. And also Judge, that's when he makes that incredible play on the wall. Run through the wall in the left in a right field there to make that catch off the bat of J.D. Martinez. Um, so he is now broken a maple leaf, and he's broken a bullpen door. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the whole thing with, with the guy on second, that was weird. Um, but regardless, King, King ends up going two innings there, two clean innings, and then it's Clay Holmes once again. Uh, doing a nice job, you know. Oswaldo gets the tack on home run in the ninth, I think it was, and the Yankees win six to three. Uh, Garrett Cole six innings, no runs, four hits, two walks, uh, a hit by pitch, uh, five strikeouts, no home runs, and the win. His curveball looked exceptional. The fastball was there. The slider looked good. Um. Again, I think he's okay with the cramps, hot day, whatever. Um, and, you know, I kind of had a realization after this start. You know how every once in a while you'll have those? Well, after the game, what I usually like doing is like I go over the box score, see who helped, you know, win my parlay or lose my parlay. Uh, so when I tap my phone to unlock it and I see it's fucking June 3rd, uh, it's June third, and Garrett Cole is seven and zero with a two eighty two ERA. I I just felt like I should mention that because I feel like the conversation has been mostly bad about Cole ever since his hot start ended. You know, but he's not really living off of that hot start. Like he's had a good season with a couple of bumps on the road, and that's why that that's the way at this point we got to look at it. It's June fifth as I record this. He's had a good year. Let's just, you know, he's 7 and 0 with a 280. That's pretty damn good. And remember, I bring it up every episode we talk about Cole, but on Garrett Cole days, my ask in the preseason was for the Yankees to play 700 ball when he takes the mound. The Yankees right now are 11 and 2 on days he pitches. That's 850 baseball, I believe. So, Cole's had a good year, man. And, you know, he's going to have bumps in the road. And the positive voice, he did not give up a home run this time. Uh, he gave up one, no, no runs. He won six innings, no runs, right? Yeah. He had 80 pitches before he was pulled. Um, And that was the middle game. Sunday, the Yankees also won. They took this game behind Domingo Herman 4-1. to one. Uh, It was a very fun pitcher's duel with Domingo Herman versus Bobby Miller, um, who has pitched well early in his career so far. Both pitchers were working quick and efficiently, too. It was a scoreless game until the seventh, but in the seventh, the Yankees play some small ball to go up one zip. Uh, Dave Roberts starts the inning with his bullpen, 
And after DJ goes down on strikes again, uh, Jake Bowers singles to left field. IKF singles on a bunt off to the side of the pitcher's mound. And then Higashioka comes through with a broken background ball to shortstop to score Jake Bowers. Um, bottom of the seventh, Domingo finally gets bit when J.D. Martinez takes him deep off a, uh, for a solo shot. Ties the game. It sucked because he had him 0-2, and then he left the pitch right there for him. Um, but Clay Holmes comes in uh, two batters later, and then he works in and out of a jam. Top eight, Yanks do some small ball again. Rizzo walks. Stanton rips a big one-out double to move him to third because he's slower than me, Rizzo. Uh, and then it's Oswaldo with his second RBI in as many games since being recalled, uh, chopping one of the second baseman to give the Yankees a 2-1 to one lead. Uh, bottom of the eighth, Holmes and Peralta get it done, and then it's Volpe with the big tack on home run uh, for some breathing room in the top of the ninth to make it 4-1 Yankees. Volpe had two hits on the night, uh, needed that badly, Good for the kid. Uh, Peralta earns the save. And the Yankees win 4-1 to one on Sunday night. This was the Sunday night baseball game. Saturday was the Fox game. Um, so they go 2-0 on the, on the national televised games. So let's hand out our awards. We'll give out our tip of the caps when we return from break. Stay with us. BD4, episode 530. I'm your host, RJ Garbone. Be right there. If you have time in the day or maybe just prefer old-fashioned reading over listening, then you can always follow along and subscribe to BD4 Blog by going to bd4blog.com. We're not on there as often, but when we do post, it's just as entertaining, opinionated, and passionate as we are on this podcast. Thank you so much. And let's keep on with the show. All right. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, RJ Carbone, and you are listening to episode 530 of the podcast. Um, We're going to start off with our tip of the caps. Uh, A few more things to talk about after that, and then we'll wrap it up from there. Um, But you know who had a good series and continues to play well for the Yankees is Jake Bowers, and he earns his first tip of the cap this series with his performance. Jake Bowers. Jake Bowers' this series goes 3-for-7 with a couple homers, four RBIs, and a walk. Three runs scored. Uh, that's a 1786 OPS in the series for three games. And he's looked pretty good, man. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's looked pretty good. Um, he's got an 866 OPS on the year. Five home runs, three doubles, 11 RBIs, 11 walks, 27 games played. Looks good, man. You know, we've talked about it before. That swing is pretty nice looking from the left side. I don't know. Uh, maybe he can sustain something. I'm not keeping my hopes up, but hey. You know, he is a former, I think the former number five prospect from Tampa. He's only 28 years old. He's got a tailor-made lefty swing for the stadium. I know that can kind of become cliche today, but he's pretty athletic Works good at bats. Maybe you have yourself a late bloomer here. You know? I mean, you you see that all the time in the big leagues. You saw it with Luke Voigt. Late bloomer who peaked with the Yankees at the right time. You know, remember when he just came here? Luke Voigt. Nobody wanted that guy in the lineup. Nobody wanted him getting every day at bats initially. I remember criticizing him a lot seeing Voigt's name in there. Then he started to give them some, some pop. Um... You know, there's there's concerns with Jake Bauer's defense. He's atrocious in the outfield, man. I will say that. Uh, I don't know what he's doing out there sometimes. Um, but he's solid at first base. That's unfortunate because Rizzo's back now, so he won't be at first. Um, they're going to have to figure out a way when everybody gets back, if everybody gets back, how to keep Bowers and Calhoun, both offensive-minded players. Um, but I like Bowers. You know, one of the... I feel like one of the underrated aspects of Jake Bowers so far has been his plate discipline. He's got a pretty good eye. Um, 11 walks in 76 plate appearances. So that's a 15% walk rate. Um, 
from what I can remember, league average is usually around 9%. So, he's he's brought a very good eye to the plate along with the home run pop. Uh, you see that, that lefty swing with good plate discipline. <laughs> you kind of think, like, could Jake Bowers be what Yankees fans hoped Greg Bird could be, <laughs> would become? I don't know, man. Maybe he has something in there. Um... But I, I got to give the guy credit. That's his first tip of the cap this season, and he's been pretty good for the Yankees so far. Um, and then we're going to Domingo Herman. Why not? Domingo Herman has pitched very well with the Yankees. In this game, he goes six and two thirds, one run, four hits, a walk, six strikeouts. Uh, the dude's just out there doing his job. He's just, he just does his job. In a way, it's kind of flown under the radar. With all the negative noise surrounding his name. Obviously the off the field stuff will always be there. But between that and the substance stuff. I feel like he's, you know. He's still been doing his job around all that negative noise. Domingo Herman has done his damn job. And if there's one, you know, if you want people to shut up about you. Then keep your mouth shut and do your job on the field. And I feel like he's at least done that. He's always given the Yankees a chance to win when he goes out there. He's always efficient with the pitch count. Feels like he's always going six plus. It's pretty impressive. Like obviously he's three and three with a six nine uh, or three six ninety RA. That's all good. It's nice. But how about the sixty one innings, thirty nine hits? That's very good. That's awesome. That is limiting traffic. The whip is under one on the season. It just feels like it matches that too. Like the eye test. It feels like he's, it's stress-free when Domingo Herman is on the mound. I mean, the dude just mopped the floor with a good Dodgers lineup last night. He made them look silly. That strikeout on Betts, the one on Freeman at the end there, that was a great battle. And Domingo, wow, what an impressive pitching performance there. He comes out on top. The curveball is looking nasty. It's filthy. Generates a ton of swing and miss. Um, Cone was hyping up the shape of it last night. It's got that 12-6 action. I think he was using the term gyro ball action. Like a gyro action. You remember that? That that term kind of like... You heard that term when um, that Boston Red Sox rookie came up. Matsuzaka. I remember he threw like a curveball that had that type of a run to it, I guess. But, um... No, Domingo Herman has been the Yankees. You can make a case he's been their most consistent pitcher. Like, Cole has been their best, obviously. But even Cole has had these blow-up starts mixed in between. I feel like Domingo is an automatic quality start right now, or close to it. Ten of his 11 starts, he's been limiting runs to four or less. And in eight of his 11 starts, he's gone at least five. In six of his 11, he's gone six or more. He's been good. Um, So, Domingo Herman, I wanted to give him the tip of the cap. And again, on the season, Domingo Herman earned his fourth tip of the cap for the Yankees. That's the second on the pitching staff behind Garrett Cole. And then thirdly, let's get to Clay Holmes. I'll give Clay a tip of the cap. Two and a third innings this series. No runs, couple strikeouts, couple walks, but no hits. 33 pitches in those innings. Earned a save, and he also earned a win. I got to credit him, man. You know, he, I, I'll throw him a bone. Clay Holmes, while not my favorite, uh, he's been good. Ever since they demoted him and just turned it into closer by committee, he's done the job. Occasionally, he'll still get the ninth inning closer spots, um, like he did in this series once. The first time he pitched, I think it was. Um, I'll never love that, but he's done well for a little bit now in any role he's been given, and I got to credit him for that. The sinker looks back, so good for him. I mean, the guy has a 284 ERA on the year, um, which is very good. And for a reliever, I know ERA isn't the only number to look at. Inherited runners, to me, are just as important. But still, Clay Holmes has done a fine job since being, I guess, demoted, in a sense. Um, You know who also looks pretty good, or who looked pretty good, in their returns to the lineup, Stanton and Donaldson. 
Giancarlo Stanton was two for seven this weekend. One home run, a double, a walk, an RBI, and two strikeouts. Um, obviously, the home run on Friday, or whenever that was, um, yeah, Friday, uh, that was good. But the double was huge. It was a very meaningful hit. Uh, the Yanks were in a close game. He's got two strikes on him late in the night. He goes down and gets it, crushes it off the top of the left field wall. And if Rizzo isn't big and white, that's an RBI there for Stanton. Um, it's a positive that Stanton looks good already. You know, we're so used to Stanton coming back and taking a few weeks to get hot. But he's looked good, so we'll see how that works. Uh, and the Yankees are going to need him, obviously. They're going to need Stanton now to be the number one bat with Aaron Judge likely down. Stanton's going to have to carry that load just like he did a few years ago. Um, and, and I do still think he's got it in him to do stuff like that. He's just got to stay healthy, obviously. But I think the talent is still there. Uh, I think he's still at the peak of his career. Uh, Donaldson, two for eight this series. A couple homers, three RBIs, three strikeouts. Um, I'm just saying, uh, Josh Donaldson has three home runs, four RBIs through seven games this year. Could he be a wild card in this lineup? Because I think we all expect him to suck. Uh, because he sucked last year. Because he's old. Uh, he's coming off another injury. And his at-bats are often ugly. But listen. With with DJ LeMayu looking pretty washed up himself. And with Oswald Peraza still in AAA for now. Donaldson is going to play. And we need him to produce. So I'm going to root for that. Is there still a world out there where Donaldson can give you 250, 750 OPS, 18 to 20 home runs? I don't know. That remains to be seen, but he hasn't looked garbage yet. So until then, I'll keep quiet and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for a couple weeks. But that's it. I'll continue to say, if he starts to struggle, two weeks is the limit before I make the call to, uh, to, to Scranton and bring up Oswald Peraza to replace his ass. So we'll see how the, how long this lasts with Donaldson, but it's you know I'm rooting for him to play well because we need it. Um, and, and speaking of Peraza, there's a good chance that Peraza does see time again in the bigs this year, because it's not just Donaldson who's in jeopardy of losing his spot, but it's also Anthony Volpe. And I know Volpe had the you know the two hits last night, the big home run. Um, he's hit a couple big ones for the Yankees, but still we are. Now on June 5th, and he's batting 193 with a 631 OPS. Those are very brutal numbers. Um, I give him the fact that he's got the power numbers to an adequate level. I mean, nine home runs, 26 RBIs for somebody who isn't hitting is not bad. You know, that's that's like a pace for maybe 20 home runs and probably 25 home runs, to be honest, and maybe 60-something RBIs. Um, but at some point we do need to see consistency, you know, um, uh, the Ophers got to end. I don't want to repeat myself too much and get into the whole Anthony, Anthony, uh, Volpe rabbit hole, but at some point we do need consistency. You know, when is that going to come? You know, cause we've seen this right where he hits a home run or two, keeps everybody quiet for a few days, but then he goes right back into another slump. Um, so all I'm saying here is is with Oswald Peraza raking in Scranton right now, definitely showing that he doesn't belong to be there all year. Um, and I still want Volpe to figure it out. But with, with, with the offensive struggles and the defensive inconsistency, you never know. And maybe maybe what they do at some point is is they move, you know, they move Glaber Torres. And when Glaber goes, I would move Volpe to second base and have Peraza come play shortstop. That's another option you can do. But yeah, I don't want again. I don't want to get into all the hypotheticals and shit. But that's about that. Um, I, I think we've we've went on enough here. Episode five thirty in the books. The Yankees are playing well. Things are, are good, but it's I, I can't say I'm excited right now. Uh, that that Judge thing really just put a damper on everything, and I'm not really happy with where they are. Because if that happens, then it's just going to be annoying. It's 
you can't lose your number one player as consistently as they've done over the last few years. So that sucks. But episode 530 in the books, we'll head to our final break, get back, wrap it up with our trivia. Stay with us. Studio 69 Productions is a production company that allows content creators of all genres to market their podcast or whatever project they're working on. It's an online platform that will promote your content no problem. All you have to do is get in touch with film director and podcast producer Leo Rodriguez from Say No More Podcast, and you're good to go. You can find him on Instagram at Studio69NJ, Studio69 Productions, where dreams are heard and born. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. And you were listening to episode 530. Sorry for the te- technical difficulties there. Um, that's it. Yanks are playing well, but things don't feel great because Aaron Judge is hurt once again. Um, but let's wrap this up with our trivia and hope things continue to be good. Um, they can still win games. They're still expected to win games. I'm not using this as an excuse. I don't think it's a minor league lineup like some people will tell you. You still got, again, Stanton, Rizzo, Torres. They got their guys who, they are guys who can carry a team. Um, especially Stanton when he's hot. And, you know, they got their pitching staff who's who have done, and continue to do a really good job, by the way. They're top five in ERA. Once again, and every week we go over this, it's now June 5th, and this the pitching staff still hasn't come down to earth as a lot of people for some reason expect. They keep doing the job, and I tell you over and over, I'm not concerned about that. They're still pitching well, so I'm still waiting for the pitching staff to crash and burn and fall to the bottom third of the league like everybody's telling me they will. <laughs> so the pitching keeps doing its damn job. They're doing the thing. Cole's been great. Herman's been great. Clark's been finding it lately. The bullpen is top notch. The pitching's been fine, people. Let's wrap it up with our trivia, and that'll be that. So, for episode 530 of the podcast... Our NYY, NYK, MMA trivia question of the day is a true or false? True or false? Whitey Ford was the first ever Cy Young winner for the Yankees. Is that true or false? Whitey Ford was the first ever Cy Young Award winner for the Yankees. Let me know the answer wherever you can reach me. If you get the answer correct, I'll give you a shout out on the next episode. True or false? Whitey Ford was the first ever Cy Young Award Cy Young Award winner for the Yankees. And that's it. I appreciate you tuning in. Episode 530 in the books. I'm your host, RJ, and I'll see you in the next episode. All right. This episode was brought to you by Anchor. Hey there. If you stayed the entire way through, we thank you immensely for it. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and that you come back for the next episode real soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, Download these episodes and share them with your friends as well. BD4 is a five-star podcast simply because of you. And we'd like to keep it that way. Have a wonderful day. Go Yankees and go Knicks.